right, howdy hi, thrill seekers. That was a little snippet of a song called Twice the Speed of Time, and that is from the second Dementia 13 album, Mirror Mind. And for you guitar spotters out there, that flying V, I traded, so if some of you may remember a, a, a Stratocaster with a blue Stratocaster with flowers all over it, my friend Buzz Click, who was the guitarist for the Akron's legendary punk rock band, the Rubber City Rebels, has been after me for years because he loved that guitar, and I didn't want to sell it to him. But uh, after I got that other Stratocaster, the George Harrison one, I started thinking, well, maybe I could trade it to him because he's a known collector of Flying V guitars. So I asked him, would you trade it to me for one of your Flying Vs? And he said, yeah, so I traded it to him for a flying V. So now I have a flying V, but I no longer have the blue flowered Stratocaster. And when I brought the flying V home, my wife said, oh, you traded away that blue flowered Stratocaster? That was my favorite one. So you can't win. So anyway, I made that video last week about kissing the Dalai Lama. And that was one of the most viewed videos I've had for a long time. And most, it seems like most of the views I got were hate viewers. You know, a lot of people left comments on the video who obviously had never watched a video by me before, had no idea who I was, and were, were like telling me I was ignorant and stupid and how dare I criticize the Dalai Lama and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And so I've been watching this story develop, and it's been kind of interesting. There's been a bunch of videos put up in reaction, like videos of these students and people, Tibetans, coming along saying, no, no, there's no way the Dalai Lama was doing anything sexual with this kid because he's so pure. He's not of the, he's not like you and me. He's a, he's a different sort of being and he never has thoughts of sex or anything like that. You have to understand that His Holiness the Dalai Lama thinks and functions in a very different frequency. He's not in our frequency. He has never had a normal life since he was a child. He's never had a social life. He has never gone out. He has never been tainted by the worthiness of jealousy, greed, uh, lust, you know, um, all of these things that we experience. And then there was Robert Thurman, uh, father of Uma Thurman uh, from uh, Pulp Fiction. Was she in Pulp Fiction? She was in some movies. I don't know if it was Pulp Fiction. Anyway. Uh, he's a known Buddhist scholar, and he was on. Uh, he got on the YouTube's making a video, uh, claiming that that what was it? Uh, the the Dalai Lama was a, a, a representative of radical innocence. I can testify from fifty nine years to the sincerity and the purity and the radical innocence. It's like it's, you know, he was so innocent that uh, that uh, you couldn't possibly uh, see anything untoward about that interaction with the kid. Now, here's my take on the whole thing. I don't think there was anything illicit or sexual or you know anything bad in his interaction with that kid. And I I, I don't know if I didn't express this very strongly in my previous video because I was sort of like baffled by it like everybody else because I didn't know what to make of the video. But my first viewing of it was it, it seemed relatively innocent, but I don't know what the hell's going on anyway. And the more I watched it, the the more I was convinced that it was just a kind of a, a weird interaction, you know, something that I wasn't understanding the cultural context of, but not not anything, you know, gross or inappropriate, just weird. And that maybe the Dalai Lama, being a person who's been in the international public spotlight for longer than I've been alive, should kind of know, you know, what is and, in a, is and is not appropriate, you know, for an international audience. So he's kind of maybe slipping a little bit there. But in any case, I don't think it's evidence that he's into little boys. So, and, and, and I also believe, and I said this in my previous video, what people are saying as this is probably something that's being manipulated by the Chinese government who are kind of PO'd at the Dalai Lama for, you know, a lot of the political stuff they got going on with the Dalai Lama. And they probably put this video out there to try to make him look bad. So all of that stuff, 
I agree with. But this idea of the Dalai Lama being not like other people and being a, a, a guy who's radically innocent or a, a representative or what do you, what, I, can't remember, I forget what Robert Thurman said exactly, but he used this word of radical innocence. And these people are, these other people who are saying that he's not like other men and he's not capable of any sort of wrongdoing and stuff. Oh, come on, give me a break. There is very definitely a dark side to the Dalai Lama. And I'll tell you the one part of it that I am most familiar with, and the part of it that really rankles me whenever it comes up about what a great saint the Dalai Lama is, and probably gets me to say things like the one that got me in the most trouble on the video that I made last week where I said I don't think the Dalai Lama knows much about Buddhism. Uh, this is the one that really bugs me, is his involvement with Shoko Asahara. Now, for those of you who don't know who Shoko Asahara was, go and look him up, because you should know who Shoko Asahara was. Shoko Asahara was a guy, a Japanese guy, who claimed to be, among many other things, a representative of Tantric Buddhism, of Tibetan Buddhism, of true Buddhism, who, who went around and he had a cult in Japan, and it was a pretty big deal cult, and his most famous thing he did in 1995 was put sarin gas, which was a poison gas developed by the Nazis, on the Tokyo subway system, and it caused a lot of panic and havoc. 13 people died, 50 others were injured, some of them very severely injured. And when you say, when, when you say the people were injured, uh, some of these people have never recovered. They're like bedridden for life. So they're, they're, they're you know, very, very seriously injured. Um, and for his crimes, he was eventually executed because they, they do have capital punishment in Japan. He was executed in 2018. It took a long time for him to get around to, to doing that. And if anybody ever deserved capital punishment, it was this guy. He, he, he not only did that subway attack in 1995, he attempted it uh, a couple of times before, and I can't remember all the details. There was one attack he did in rural Japan that, that killed uh, some people out there. And then there were some other things he's suspected of doing that, that also killed people, these sort of test runs. So he was doing some pretty nasty stuff. And I was in Japan in 1995, and I rode the Tokyo not mass transit system on the day, on March 20th, 1995, when those attacks happened. I got to work, and, as, and when I got to work, everybody was talking about this thing that happened, and I found out what happened. And, and luckily for me, the, the, the train that I rode didn't go through any of the, the stations that he put the poison on, but it went nearby some of them. So, you know, I was pretty close to where this all went down. So this is near and dear to my heart. Now, the Dalai Lama's involvement with this guy, every time I look into it, it gets nastier and nastier. In fact, this morning I spent some time researching it, and my God, it it was a lot more, the, the Dalai Lama was a lot more involved with Shoko Asahara than I previously suspected. I knew there was at least one photograph of, of them together, and I thought, okay, well, Shoko Asahara slipped into some kind of a meeting, you know, or one of these meet and greets with the Dalai Lama and then got a picture with him. No, it's not like that. There are at least seven documented personal meetings, one-on-one -on -one personal meetings between Shoko Asahara and the Dalai Lama. Uh, let's see, I'll get my notes here. Uh, the Dalai Lama, in between 1987 and 1992, accepted from Shoko Asahara $1.5 million in various currencies uh, between 87 and 92. And in 1992, in addition to the $1.5 million, uh, Shoko Asahara gave the Dalai Lama $1.2 million in one lump sum in 1992. So, yeah, the Dalai Lama was pretty well involved with Shoko Asahara, and it's not as if he knew nothing about this. Apparently, a lot of people who were watching Shoko Asahara's activities in Japan were warning the Dalai Lama, this guy is bad news, you shouldn't be accepting money from this guy, you shouldn't be meeting with this guy, he's bad news, don't 
don't go near this guy. The Dalai Lama was ignoring him because, of course, he was getting lots and lots of money from the guy, you know, for his whatever. I don't know what the Dalai Lama was doing, which brings up another point. You know, there's there's all this stuff about the Dalai Lama. I, I, somebody pointed out, I think one of the comments sections, or I don't even remember where this was, that the Dalai Lama keeps no bank account of his own and he's a humble monk. Oh, come on. Okay, you know, if you're an anonymous monk out there somewhere in Tibet or wherever with no bank account of your own, that's one thing. If you're the Dalai Lama with no bank account of your own, it does. you don't need a bank account of your own if you're the Dalai Lama. You, there's plenty of people. Whatever you want, whatever the Dalai Lama wants, he gets. He doesn't need a bank account of his own. I've seen this trick being played by, by people with far less fame and notoriety than the Dalai Lama. I once watched this Canadian guy who was a, another, you know, one of these monks who keeps no money of his own, just just getting all kinds of handouts from his followers and limousine rides and all kinds of stuff and fancy meals and what was he doing? Skydiving lessons and all kinds of stuff. I only was around this guy one day and I was totally disgusted with him. Uh, some people kind of convinced me to go and see this dude because he was a very high spiritual guy. It was when I was in Japan. And, and I spent, I don't know, four or five hours with this guy at some kind of retreat or something that he, he did. And I was just disgusted by it. But I watched how this game works. So you don't, yeah, the Dalai Lama doesn't have a bank account of his own. Big effing deal. Okay, so the Dalai Lama was very closely connected with Shoko Asahara at the time, okay? Like, he was closely involved with Shoko Asahara up until 1992 at least. 1995 was the sarin gas attack. Some of the other attacks that Shoko Asahara was doing were done... By 1992, Asahara was already committing atrocities in Japan. Minor ones, not as big as the 95 uh, subway attack. But come on, he was doing really nasty crap in Japan already while the Dalai Lama was involved with him, okay? Another guy the Dalai Lama was involved with and endorsed was Keith Raniere, who was from the Nixi Nexium cult. And if you want to go look up the Nexium cult, uh, there was at least two documentaries. My wife is really into these cult documentaries. It's one thing we share. <laughs> we like to watch cult documentaries. So I've watched, I think, three documentaries about the Nixium cult. It's spelled N-X-I-V-M, I think. So go look it up. You'll find them. I think Netflix has one. Maybe Hulu has another one. I don't know. But he was, he was endorsing Keith Raniere. He endorsed Shoko Asahara. There's a, uh, there's a letter out there that, uh, that uh, the Dalai Lama signed endorsing Shoko Asahara as a, as a great dude and, and, you know, that Asahara used in his publicity for years. So, you know, the idea that the Dalai Lama is this pure guy, just sweet and wonderful, and nothing could ever be wrong with him... No, 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 no. So, I don't know the whole deal with the Dalai Lama. And maybe, you know, some total he's mostly good. You know, like those riots a few years ago were mostly peaceful. But really, mostly good is not that great when one of the things you're doing is endorsing a guy who was trying to commit mass murder in Tokyo. So... Even though you're mostly good and you're endorsing a guy and basically helping him commit mass murder because it was the publicity that he got by being pals with the Dalai Lama that enabled him to get so many followers. That was definitely instrumental in helping him get a lot of followers and a lot of people who ended up gassing the Tokyo subway system were probably attracted to him because he was friends with the Dalai Lama. So... You know, so the idea that the Dalai Lama is this pure dude who could never do any wrong, don't give me that, okay? Just don't give me any of that, because it ain't true. So, okay. So that's that's my spiel on the Dalai Lama. I, I, you know, that's why I say things like the Dalai Lama doesn't know anything about Buddhism. We can all slip now and then. In fact, you know, I did a few years ago. There was some con man 
who was trying to get my endorsement. I didn't actually end up giving him my endorsement, by the way, but I kind of came close. He, he uh, presented himself as a Rinza. I wish I could remember his name because I would love to out him, but I can't remember his name. But he was a Scottish guy who claimed to be a Rinzai Buddhist monk who, uh, who was actually a pretty good writer, and he wanted me to endorse his book, so I introduced him to my publishers. Uh, and it turned out uh, that he was not a Rinzai uh, Buddhist monk at all. He was just pretending to be. But you know, you can all you can get fooled by people. So you, you can. But seven personal meetings over a course of, of how many years is that? Uh, five years and then taking how much? Almost three million dollars from the dude? Yeah, yeah, that's that's some that's some deep involvement. You know, that isn't just a little meeting with the guy. So yeah, I'm not impressed with the Dalai Lama. Let's just let's just say that. I am not impressed with the Dalai Lama. So yeah, when he asked the kid to suck his tongue, that was probably innocent. When he was meeting with Asahara all those times, that was not innocent. Okay? So there you go. That's my feelings on the Dalai Lama. So, if you want to contribute to me saying more bad stuff about the Dalai Lama, and don't even get me started about the Dalai Lama's involvement with the CIA and the fact that the theocracy that existed before the Chinese communists came over and took over Tibet was probably not much better than, than Tibet is under the Chinese communists. You know, it was not a paradise before the communists came in either, you know, so they weren't that great. But I, let's not even go there. Uh, anyway, if you want to contribute to me saying more bad stuff about the Dalai Lama, which I probably won't because I, I don't think I have any more to say than this, you can go to the URL you're seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main and usually only ways of making a living. And I appreciate your support. But as always, this is offered for free. So you don't got to support me if you don't want to support me. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. There's Ziggy. We took him to a vet. And he was at the vet for a very long time. And he didn't like it at all. But the vet looked at him said he was okay, that he probably got into some bad stuff somewhere on somebody's lawn or something. And anyway, he got some treatment and some medicine, and now he's feeling much better. So thank you guys for for all your words of support for Ziggy. And uh, anyway, now he's, he's doing real good. Okay, Ziggy, have a good nap. <laughs>